Good evening folks, welcome back to Celtic Fans TV here at the Decoit in Rotterdam at finished Feyenoord 2. Celtic nil, Callum, a frustrating night, a chaotic night, hectic. Um, if we start from the beginning, I thought we started the game really well, I thought we played, I thought a lot of the aspects of the game in the first half were really, really good. Coming into the game, we didn't know how we were going to fare against Feyenoord, they came in in really good domestic form. I thought for the first 40 odd minutes we were a better team um, would you make it? Exactly what you said mate I thought we were, we were very calm and composed our ball retention was brilliant in that first half we kept the ball and, and at half time me you're saying how are we 1-0 down but that's the love of Europe and that's what happens at this level if you want to just dangle your leg out like O'Reilly does and thinks that he's not going to get punished well you're mistaken because you will get punished at this level Feyenoord weren't a great side I didn't think that at home I thought they were going to uh, give us more problems than they did I know the second half it changes but with the two red cards but for the first half 11 v 11 I thought we were by, by the better side I thought we were the better side not by far I was going to say that but probably not I thought we just edged it to be honest um, there's moments Atati needs to slip in Kyogo you have to learn and we were, we were told last year was, a, was a, a moment where the players would need to learn and take it into this year the group is much easier this year than what it was last year and they're not learning and that's maybe where the quality has to become better if Hatati wants to go to the Premier League he needs to learn he needs to slip Kyogo in and that's the moment that makes the difference and they punish us never mind the Premier League man if he wants to be a player for Celtic mate, in the exactly, Champions League mate, exactly mate he's, he's, he's got to learn but I, Joe, um, I thought Joe Hart was alright on the ball his distribution was a wee bit slower at times I thought he could have played it to Johnson quicker and we could have got out at times and, and put Feyenoord back the way he took too long but Scales Lager Bielka and I know he gets sent off but in the first half I thought they were brilliant I thought Scales was immense on the ball I thought he was calm he I thought he defended out. all night I thought he defended his front post really Aye, well and everybody can, can batter him as soon as he makes one mistake but I thought he was brilliant mate tonight and I thought it was harsh that he was on the losing side see in the first half Callum I thought the press was really good I thought we were even when we didn't have the ball we were, we were up at Fire North Hatati was going to join Kyogo in the press we won it back a few times in their half we caused them problems we didn't really carve out too many clear cut chances but the best opening as you say is when Hatati has it here and I think that we win it back that's when we win it back in their half and hatati has got a chance I don't know if it comes so early at him that he's not aware that Kyogo's there but it's basically two on one and he goes for a shot straight into the defender that's the best opening we had in the whole game when we were in the ascendancy and when you're in the ascendancy in these games at this level you need to kill it you need to take the chances and okay it didn't develop into a chance but that's the best opening we've had all night and we had to make the right decision we didn't Orelli gives away the free kick I haven't seen it back yet a lot of people saying Kyogo's at fault in the wall losing a, losing a goal from that position 25-30 yards out for a free kick when you've been the better team the whole first half so deflating to go in 1-0 at half time we come back out and I thought for the first five minutes we need to cling on here we need to get to 60 minutes at 0-0 we did that and we were maybe just starting to control the ball again we were maybe just starting to get a foot on it Lagerbiel gives away a penalty we go down to 10 men Joe Hart saves it and you think we've got a reprieve and then two minutes later we're down to nine men and the rest of the game for their own I think final of two goals ruled out for, for offsides uh, VAR checks the game after we're down to nine men is, is just it's a nothing game we're just clinging on I thought we'd done really well to keep it at 2-0 if I'm honest and that's harsh on that first half but games are 90 minutes and I'm not here for 45 minutes of football Celtic you're here for the 90 and you've got to give it final deserve the win because they kept pushing and pushing and I finally they got it look away from home in Europe wherever you go there's no easy game and I know it's it's so easy to say that but it's true there is no easy games and when you have your moment and, and that momentum's with you punish teams because if you don't they'll slap you right back in the face and they'll punish you boom 2-0 two, two red cards games games a bogey that's it it's done 2 nils, not a bad result we, we're getting two red cards because if it comes down to the head to head I think Celtic can take two off the uh, Feyenoord get Celtic part um, and I know that sounds maybe arrogant and cheeky because they've just beat us 2 nil. but up to the, the red cards the game is very very even and I think um, Celtic will have a much better chance at Celtic Park I have no doubts but uh, there's moments and I mean the O'Reilly uh, giving away the free kick 
It's just criminal. It's absolutely criminal. All night, they had chances like that. They wanted to play in the little pockets and turn, and then they just blasted it over the bar. Joe Hart makes one save, tips it over. Anything else was, was nothing. There was nothing there. I thought Feyenoord struggled in the final third up front. You could clearly see that they didn't have that main striker in Santiago. I mean, yeah. So that they really struggled, but... Celtic give them the chance when you give opportunities mate you're just going to get punished it's the reality of where we are mm. yeah Feyenoord missing a couple of key players tonight we're missing a couple of key players as well Carter Vickers particularly I thought coming to this stadium the atmosphere which I thought was decent but Feyenoord didn't play very well which I think quelled the atmosphere and that's credit to Celtic mm -hmm. it's for spells in the game but I think you could tell this Feyenoord team haven't played very much Champions League football. I think there's three players in the whole squad that have got experience at Champions League level. There, there might have been a wee bit of apprehension for their side of things, and that might be why we controlled the game in the first half, but we just couldn't make it pay, and then it gets away from us in the second half with the red cards, but have you seen anything tonight that gives you encouragement going forward? We've got back-to-back -back home games now against Lazio and then against uh, Atletico Madrid. They drew one each tonight. I think the Lazio goalkeeper equalised in the last minute. Um, it's, a, it's maybe reminiscent of last season to say this but do you see encouragement in the performance that can give us some sort of hope in the next two games I could say I am not because it's raw and I don't really I need to go and watch it back when you get home tomorrow night at like 11 o'clock at night um, the choice are following Celtic in it um, but no it's um, I could I'll say I because I thought we were we were good, but is that because Feyenoord are inexperienced and that showed a little bit tonight? You could see that they were a wee bit they didn't keep the ball, um, especially in the first half. They didn't have a great ball retention. The fans were on them in the first three minutes and they were already on them. Um, so you could see they were nervous. They're at home. The atmosphere I thought was brilliant at the start, like coming into the atmosphere before the game started. Brilliant atmosphere for both sets of fans. But then I was really disappointed with the atmosphere and that is credit to Celtic. I think the Feyenoord fans, when they're 2-0 up and there's nine men, they're expecting four, five, six, seven. They're just expecting batter and, and put this tie out the way in the sense of if it goes to head-to-head, -to -head, Celtic can't catch them. I think that's why it was a little bit quieter. And it's credit to Celtic because when you've got nine men, what can you do? Especially against a team that is on the same wavelength as Celtic, the same quality. So it's, it's really difficult. But I think we've shown little improvements, but Celtic still need more. They need more. And look, we've got a great revenue. Peter Lawwell's come out and says it's it's the record sales of uh, shirt sales. It's it's unbelievable money and all this and that. And they're building a 20 million at Barrafields and that. Sometimes you would like a wee, uh, just a wee gem here or there. Somebody, somebody like maybe like a big Dembele. I thought oh when he came on was actually better than Kyogo. And that's no me picking on Kyogo. We didn't suit Hatati, for example, doesn't he geek out with the ball? So we're almost shooting him in his own foot. It's not even him shooting his foot. It's, it's our teammates. Give him the ball, and he didn't get much service. When we went long, he get he get demolished of uh, the big boy at the back, the captain. Um, but I thought, oh, when he came on, when the man was brilliant, he, he led the line as well as good. He tried to turn players. He got away. Do Celtic need that in Europe? I think they need a bit more physicality. Brendan Rodgers spoke to his, uh, the very first press conference. Says, I'm going to bring um, physicality back more to the power. team. I don't really I see that. I don't think he was backed in that. And you can see by some of his press conferences, and it will tell in Europe, it will tell. At Celtic Park, I believe we've got a chance against Feyenoord and Lazio. I do believe we've got a chance. But you've got to be clinical at this level or you're going to get beaten. Yeah, that's it. Simple. That's what it comes down to. Um, Saturday, we go to Livingston. <laughs> um, what a contrast. Um, back on the plastic pitch, difficult venue, but that's the, the challenge that for the team to go for domestic level, European, and back to domestic <laughs> football, which is the bread and butter. A big game on Saturday that we've just got to go and, and make sure we, we do a professional job and get three points. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be tough because you're going for the highs of this even though you've lost, but the atmosphere and the travel coming back, the last place you want to go is to Tony Macaroni to Martindale because it's just going to be a hard block. It's going to be like almost playing Atletico Madrid Juniors and it just knows good, isn't it? Just going to be so tight to beat. Um, Celtic just need to do the job and we've had an all right record there, obviously under Ange. Now it's back to Rodgers. I don't know if Rodgers had many games at Livy when he was here. I don't know if Livy were up at that point. Um, so I don't know how his record is, but two, yeah. just got to be professional. They've got to try and get the job done um, and that's all we can do and try and get the three points, put this behind us. And we move on to our next home game, which is Lazio, at home in the Champions League. We've just got to look forward to that game and we've got to learn. You've got to learn at this level, Paul, or you're not going to improve. It's as simple as that. That's it. That's it. Uh, it was a similar story for Celtic away from home in Europe. A defeat, but hopefully something to build on in terms of performance that we can take into these back-to-back -back home games. Like this video, comment with your own thoughts on tonight's game below. 
Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you at the weekend in Livingston. Thank you.